Hello, everyone. I'm Rodrigo Silva, and welcome to the first episode of Let's Talk About Social Inclusion. Our speaker today is Linia Bruno from Stockholm University, who will explore with us economic abuse from child and youth perspectives. This conversation is based on research that was published in our open access journal, Social Inclusion, by the, uh, the person invited today. Hi, Linia. Welcome to our episode. Hi, um, thank you so much for having me. So the first question uh, for you would be, why is this topic so important? Mm. Well, to my knowledge, uh, this paper is the first research review on economic abuse focusing on child and youth perspectives. Um, and it's important, I think, from both from a social justice perspective and also because of this uh, striking gap in the literature. Uh, and why is economic abuse important? Um, well, there are many studies focusing on this issue from uh, victimized women's perspectives. Um, but I think that if we, there is still, you know, it's not uh, so established as uh, other kinds of uh, abuse. Uh, and I think that um, when these systematic failures to recognize economic abuse as a form of violence uh, co contributes to continuation of abuse. Of course. And when you started to write on this piece, so what were you hoping to find? <clears throat> what was, uh, can you explore a little bit more the, the gap? Mm. Sure. Well, I I knew I had a pretty understanding of that. It would not be so many studies on uh, children and young people, but I was actually, I expected to find more still. Uh, so this uh, review, it, um, it has these themes, um, economic abuse uh, directed towards children and uh, in uh, young people's uh, intimate uh, relationships and in the context of unrelated violence and also economic abuse in relation to parenting with uh, discussions on implications for dependent children. So these are the themes uh, in this review. And I found, uh, I found both uh, quantitative and qualitative studies uh, from very diverse contexts. Um, but uh, not as much as I expected. Of course. And uh, this is a review paper that you published. What are the most important uh, findings or elements that you would highlight uh, after publishing this piece? Um, I don't know. Should I say something perhaps about uh, what economic abuse is considered to be? Or is it, you know... Because it can be is a type of uh, intimate partner violence, and it can be exerted uh, in many ways. Like, for example, um, stealing or destroying the victim's property, excessive control, demanding receipt, uh, denying access to bank accounts, or preventing the victim from seeking education or paid work, uh, demanding the victim to um, commit fraud. Uh, not contributing to household expenses and so on. it can be exerted in a numerous ways. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, and we have quite a lot of research on um, children's exposure to intimate partner violence, other kinds of violence, but not economic abuse, I think it's a, mm -hmm. it's a missing piece. And mm -hmm. we also have a, a quite extensive uh, body of research on child poverty, so but not on economic abuse. Uh, but about the main findings, um, I think it, there were some quantitative studies uh, suggesting that economic abuse had a stronger association in comparison to uh, physical abuse, uh, stronger association with uh, child neglect and child uh, delinquency. Uh, but what I found um, most, most interesting was this... Um, interviews, qualitative interviews with children, um, these studies, they were not focusing on, uh, on economic abuse, but on coercive control and how children were coping with this. Uh, and for example, uh, narratives of children talking about how fathers with restraining orders uh, uh, did seek them out and trying to buy contact and to buy con um, information about the mother. Mm -hmm. and how these children um, actively resisted this uh, financial control um, and uh, 
one boy explicitly stated that uh, I'm not going to be bought, for example. Uh, and my interpretation of this is that uh, one could interpret this as actually economic abuse directed um, directly towards these children because um, using money as a means of control, not only towards the mother, but also towards the children when trying to buy contact and withholding money that these children are entitled to. Mm -hmm. You have uh, you have given us uh, some examples of uh, real life situations. Uh, so mm -hmm. a bit between the research that you found and real life situations. So what I would ask you now uh, is, can you indicate to the researchers out there what comes next in this topic? So what doors does it open for future research? What's left? Mm -hmm. Well, a lot <laughs> still, but um, I think there is also quite a um, need of uh, clarifications concerning the concept, because uh, in these studies, uh, they don't use the same definitions. They use uh, different concepts like financial control, material violence, um, so they don't use the same concepts. and. Um, so we need to, it's difficult, of course, to distinguish uh, and to determine when is an unequal relation, when it turns um, into an abusive relation. So mm. that's always, you know, difficult, but more uh, work on that. And, and also we need to know, I think, more, more studies on experiences of, of survivors in general, but... Uh, in particular from from child's perspectives are needed of course your research shows the tip of the iceberg um, mm. of this apparently can you provide uh, some additional resources about the topic that we discussed today uh well it depends on what you are interested in specifically uh, of course uh, i know that there's um, more research done on this topic in in usa and in the uk than in in the Nordic uh, states and in the rest of Europe, I think. So, um, but you could uh, you could view the reference list, read the paper, and Google. Of course, and I have nothing specific to. Of course, to well, as a review paper, I believe the final references list will provide plenty and enough information for for future research. Um, thank you, Linia. This episode is available on the Let's Talk About Social Inclusion website, on Cogitatio's YouTube channel, as well as in podcast directories. Linia, it was a pleasure. Thank you.